Good morning. It is September 24th and we are, oh that's a big drop, we are leaving Milwaukee. Today is the day after 146 days here in Milwaukee. Um, big summer, lots of events happening, the major one being my daughter had a little girl. So now I've got two grandchildren and uh, they moved down to the um, suburb of Chicago, a couple weddings going on. I mean there's, there's just a lot of activities. But we're finally on the road, and we've got a lot going on ahead of us. So as much fun as Sue had this summer with all <laughs> of the joy that you saw in her face when I she did. was talking about her grandchildren, I was worried about this thing yeah. on a weekly basis because poor Miles, who brought us to so many wonderful places, and we keep calling our magic carpet, needs a lot of TLC. Yeah. In fact, we had sympathy failures on our Honda uh, for miles because uh, literally the, in the last couple of weeks we had to put a battery in it. On the way when we first got here we had a cylinder misfire. I had to put a muzzler in there to stop the uh, uh, cylinder management system from changing the piston uh, the ones that were fired, we had to put a windshield in I was going to say, it. don't forget the, the chip that yeah. turned into a crack. All right, enough of that. Yeah. So where are we going right now? Rather than take two days to get somewhere, which we would normally do, we're going to do it in one day, and, we're, and I'm going to finally man up. <laughs> and I'm going to sit in a driver's seat probably six, six and a half hours. But we're going to Altoona, Iowa, from Milwaukee, Wisconsin, and the name of the place is called Summit Products. Now... For those of you that don't know, Summit Products is literally the OEM supplier for all of the stainless steel armor that goes on the bottom of the baggage doors for most of the big motorhome manufacturers. And it even goes on some of the boutique uh, manufacturers where the metal is, is got kind of a, a corrugated look to it and goes up way up the sides so it's a really big deal we're really excited to be able to go there we don't know at this point what we're going to be able to show you we've actually uh, just got a deal to go there to show you how you measure and how mm -hmm. you can uh, send in your order and have it sent to you and then you can either have it put on by your favorite body shop or your favorite RV repair place, or if you have a friend to help you and you take your time, you can probably put it on yourself. So that's what we're gonna be doing today. This is our adventure. Yep. Let's do it. So today's video is about the preparations that we had to undertake to get ship shape again to be able to travel after sitting 146 days in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. We show a little bit of our travel day getting to Summit Products here in Altoona, Iowa to get the stainless steel armor installed. But you don't want to miss out on our follow-up video after this where we show the measuring process, we show a little bit of what the inside looks like at this fantastic facility, and then finally show it being installed on our 2014 Newmar Dutch Star model 4369. So I thought I would grab a quick video inside here. I understand the air conditioning's on and I didn't want to turn it off because we're working on the rig. And we're gonna need the AC when we get back in. Sue never wants me to show how messy the rig is on the inside, but I want to show the realities of this. You'll see I have some windshield repair kits that I have to work on. I've been slowly working on this box that's been sitting on the driver's seat inside the rig. Sue's working on Pinterest here so that we've got good information for you guys. And here's an example of last minute, the bed needing to be put in place. And we're trying to uh, go out with some friends today so we can't worry too much about the niceties of making a bed and everything. We need to get ready to start moving. We've been sitting in one spot for five months and we're starting to wrap up different jobs you can see that we are getting ready to go bike riding today and we had to open up the Honda over there to get the ladder out and you can see that I wisely have Sue up on the ladder you certainly don't want the Chan man up there and let's uh, turn the microphone around and see if Sue has anything uh, 
to say. All right, I'm bringing that camera up here in a second. We're cleaning out the gutters, and in May, we were, were here early May in Wisconsin. We usually don't park underneath the um, trees, but in May and June, we were inundated with little flying seeds and leaves and stuff like that. And uh, just like with the house, we thought we better clean out the gutter. Yeah. I am amazed on uh, what's up here. It's a leaf and muddy mess. Come on down. I got to ask you a question, and then you can take the camera up there. All right. Realistically, Sue, why don't you confess that we've never cleaned the gutters? No, we in have six never. Six years. That no. We've owned everything. We haven't. And. Uh, Live and learn. You need to clean your gutters. Why don't you go over in the back and show people what you just worked on? Uh, we were working inside here. Let me not hit my head. And we have, a, we have a connection down here that has come loose. And since we're going to be going to Alaska, I thought I better tighten this up before it falls off. Not going to hit my head. Oh, I did hit my head. Perfect. And so I sent Sue down underneath there with a yoga mat so she was comfortable, but she did that. Right before we're ready to take off, we have to do a lot of maintenance things, and they're kind of the same things all the time, and you know, you kind of change around. So today, I decided that I wanted to grease the tow bar telescopic cylinders on my blue ox. You're supposed to do that every year. I think I've been a little uh, derelict in my duty, and I didn't remember how to do it, and I could have went to the Blue Ox website, but I went to one better. I went to the RV Geeks, and it's an excellent video on what you have to do to uh, service your uh, Blue Ox tow bar. So you might want to go to that if you really want to learn how to do it. But what I wanted to show you is this is the tools and cabinetry and everything you need when you're going to be getting ready to be traveling. Let me show you what Sue is doing. Sue is working with uh, blowing off the top of our toppers. So we took out our telescopic ladder here because we used to carry a folding ladder which is way better than the telescopic one. But guess what? It's too heavy for me. And the only way I could carry it effectively was to hang it on the back of my RV. And then that meant I was too sheepish and too lazy to take everything off so that I could open up and look at my diesel engine. And I decided that that was a bad trade-off. Just bought the Milwaukee 18-volt uh, 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 vacuum, shop vac. Bought that uh, blower. Really loved that. Let's go back and look at the tow bar. So if you look at the RV Geeks one, They'll show you that they took these off, cleaned them off, greased up the socket, put it back in, twisted it in, make sure that these spring clips work. I didn't think I was going to make a video until I saw what mine looked like. Come on, let's go take a look oh at them. So the last time I had this serviced, I had it done in 2019 at the Blue Ox Rally. And that meant it probably was in January. 20, 21, 22, 23. I'm a bad boy. So this is what your cylinder looks like. And you have this vision when you're operating this, like, oh, this is going to be so shiny and everything, you know. Well, this is what it ends up looking like. And I'm going to clean it first by spraying it down with silicone spray and wiping it all clean. And then I'm going to take a lithium heavy-duty grease I'm going to swab that down and then the boot I will reattach with brand new zip ties. I didn't get to this side yet. These here are kind of limp and you don't want them to be tight, but I think you want them to maybe be a little bit less limp. So I'm going to tighten those up a tad. This thing's pretty tight already. Uh, to be able to spread these, I'll probably leave that alone. And I'm going to tighten this slightly so that when we articulate it up and down, it never falls on us. Uh, one other thing I want to show you guys before we quick click away from this segment is I had a subscriber that told me about these pins. And I used to have a Blue Ox pin here that locked and a Blue Ox pin here that locked. And uh, I don't think it was the Blue Ox one that broke, but I had a video out there, and I'll link it up in the corner, where the, uh, the uh, hooks that I put in here that go to my Honda 
had nut cracked off this lock mechanism on the previous one I had and I just discovered it when we were hooking up. So the subscriber said, hey, what you really should get is a pin that's one piece. This is not pushed on. This is part of the actual pin. And he said the lock mechanism goes on here, but you've got this safety clip prior to the lock. So if the lock gets busted off, you still got one more line of defense. I like these a lot better. I'll, uh, uh, and they're in our Amazon store. Take a look at them. All right, back to work for me. So we just started a Honda so we can heat it up and uh, get it ready to tow, but that's not what I wanted to mention. I wanted to mention, we'll insert a little vignette here on what happened to us uh, about a week and a half after we were here when we had to move the rig over one foot. So take a look at this. We are getting ready to just move over at uh, State Fair. We're going to get a little bit closer to the post so we have more space to um, park our car on the other side. And unfortunately, as we're pulling out, I saw this black line. I'm like, what the heck? And noticed that this tire, the back tire, was not moving. Today, Sue is purposely going to have the walkie-talkies ready. We don't need the walkie-talkies to get out of such a simple spot like this. There's no trees, there's no obstructions. But she's going to be back here watching both of my tags. Now what have I done different this time? This time, because there is a potential that my brake drums could be rusted in position, if I have the weight uh, off my tag axles because my uh, airbags are deflated, I don't have enough down pressure to be able to break them loose. Today, when I aired up, I intentionally turned off my automatic system on my tag, and so I'm expecting that my tag airbags are full as well as my regular airbags, so I have down pressure on these tires, so I'll break them loose going forward. Where did I learn that? I learned that on IRV2 from the other experts that have had this problem. We'll see if it works. And if it does, I'll report back in, and now I will be an expert on rusty tag mm. axles. Let's get going. Looks like it's moving. Let me check the other side. Yep, they're all moving. Okay, here's where we've been sitting for most of the time, and these are the skid marks. This was our left side. You can see we did move over quite a bit. So uh, here we're traveling, thinking we're gonna do um, some drive and talk, and Mark's telling me how to set up the tripod in the camera. <laughs> All right, so I'm a, high, I, I'm a retired high school art teacher, and one of the many classes that I taught was digital photography and Photoshop. But, you know, sometimes I tell Mark how to hold his wrench. So anyways, this is what goes on in the cab as we're driving. <laughs> <laughs> nice big pull throughs this is nice all right it's going to be a short stop this is what we call splash and dash why is it uh why is there splash involved so we plan our fuel stops at about the half tank mode so that i can get out of the cab and uh, stretch my legs, maybe hit the restroom. And you can see here how wonderful it is to just use the big boy truck stops so that you don't have anything in the way. Easy in, easy out. Time for a stop. We've got, oh, you can't tell, but we need a serious window wash. Dash. 469. 469. All right, so we'll see what we end up paying here with the TSD Logistics. And you look across the street there, that BP is 469 for diesel too. We call it diesel. 
Daiso, we call in the whole Jim family. You can go to our YouTube channel or website to learn more about the Open Roads Diesel Fuel Discount Card. Check out this video. And if you'd like to see our spreadsheet of all our stops and our savings, you can email us at ourjourneyinmiles at gmail.com. And in the subject, just say Diesel Fuel Program. And if you aren't already a member, sign up and tell them Our Journey in Miles sent you. We appreciate your support and you won't be sorry. One of the jobs Sue is tasked with is when she gets back in the cab, she watches the traffic to see which way to go to get out of the fuel stop. Sometimes it's obvious like this one and sometimes it's not. Summit Products sent us in an email excellent instructions on where to park parallel to this building and to stay away from the end of the building because there's a garage door on there that there's some lift truck traffic that comes in every once in a while. Now to Sue's right is a little box on the building that has 50 amp service and once we pulled in and parked and we were all set in place and plugged in we then deployed our slides you can see here I'm looking to make sure there's nothing that fell in between the slide and the seats and before you knew it we were ready to relax we're here at Summit Products. Let me show you what we're gonna have measured and what we're gonna have installed. On all the OEM new coaches, I think it's still an option, but everybody ends up uh, ordering it because it's a great protective piece of equipment that you can put on the bottom of your baggage doors. What we're here for, it's called stainless steel armor, and it actually wraps around the edge and goes up and they make it in different heights. There's a shorter one, a middle, a tall one, and, and they literally sell ones that are very, very tall. And those, I think, are particular to the Prevo line and some of the really, really high-end coaches that have a lot of stainless here to begin with, and it just kind of complements it. And each of these doors, even these edges here, not here, you, you can get a loop that goes over these tires. I'm not getting that. But on each of these baggage doors, this armor is put on. And we decided to put this on because we thought we were going to Alaska. That's another story. And all the stones and things in Alaska, we didn't want beating away at this as we're driving by. Forgot about something else. I also opted to have this taken off. And these are gonna be covered in stainless too. Oh. Remember, it's not steel, it's chrome, it's stainless. And you know, this is seeing water all the time, that's what you want. Here's another thing that we opted to have done. This door cover and the handle has- uh, Seen its day. Seen its day, it's worse for the wear. And so we're getting this replaced as well with a stainless product. Nice ponytail. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so here's today's adventure in RVing. We're at Summit Metal Products in Altoona, Iowa. We're in their facility that produces the stainless steel products for most of the OEM equipment. You have to embrace the adventures of doing something like this. We're thankful that they have a facility like this that allows you to plug in and be ready to have something like this installed. This particular facility does not normally uh, install them. They're not normally set up for this. They're more of a production facility. This is being done as Kind of a special treat for us to be able to bring it to you. This is an unbelievably impressive place 
I think we've probably shown already during the day what it looks like, but I thought you might like the fun to see what it looks like to stay overnight in your rig getting ready to have this dazzling product put on your rig and make it look even better. Well, that wraps up today's video, and we suggest that you uh, press the subscribe button so you don't miss out the follow-up video where we show the measuring process, show you a little bit more detail on what it looks like inside the Summit Products Manufacturing Facility, and show the actual installation of the armor on our rig. So until we get to meet you on the road or in a campground someday, we invite you to join us every Sunday morning on YouTube for another episode of our journey in miles.